Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, my name is Tanya Cutsforth. Like I said, uh, you probably just heard me say that, uh, Allison, I'm going to kick off the meeting. Um, I really appreciate you taking time to join us tonight. Um, feel free at any point if you have questions. Um, you're welcome to just speak up during the presentation or you can use the chat. I've got the chat up. Um, either works. Like to keep this fairly informal. Um, I've got probably about 15 minutes of presentation and then time at the end for questions. But like I said, very happy to entertain questions um, anytime throughout. So um, my name is Tanya Cutsforth. Um, I run a college prep program for high school seniors called Embark Seminar. Um, Wisconsin Dells is partnering with me to offer this to the class of 2023 uh, completely free of charge. Um, I, you'll learn more about my experience in a minute, but um, programs like this often cost students and families hundreds, um, if not thousands of dollars, depending on uh, where you go through. Um, so your student has a really unique opportunity to participate in this uh, through their school free of charge. So the mission of Embark and what I do is pretty simple, um, help students start college uh, with intention. Higher education is expensive um, and the semesters really tend to fly by for students. So uh, my goal is to help them find their fit sooner so that they can maximize their investment um, in higher ed. So when working with students, I often ask them to think early on about what they want their life to look like five years from now. Where do they wanna be? What do they hope they're doing? What is the lifestyle that they want? Um, so obviously, as you all know, I know very well, none of us have a crystal ball. So I don't think there's ever been a time in my life where I could accurately predict um, anything that far out or much of anything. Um, but I do think it helps to have a plan, even if that plan changes along the way. So when it comes to education, higher ed after a high school, I do think it opens doors, but I do not think that there's a one size fits all for students. Um, so I designed Embark and the curriculum so that it could be tailored to each student, whether they're planning to attend a two-year school, a four-year school, or some other sort of vocational program. Uh, the universal goal is to help students find something that's a good fit for them, something that sparks their interests, will help them get the skills that they need for the life they want, um, and also help them figure out you know, exactly what those things might be. So a bit more about me. Um, most of my career has been at University of Wisconsin Madison. Um, I've been in a number of different uh, teaching, advising, teaching and advising spaces there since 2011. Um, my focus has always been on novel ways to connect students with the people, the resources, and the skills that they need uh, to make the most of their college experience. Um, in 2018, I had a pretty unique opportunity to create a new summer course, an online course for incoming students. Uh, the program was called Cal's Quick Start. Um, it was an online first year seminar that allowed students to also move in early to campus at the end of the online course. So the premise of creating the program was that if we connected with students earlier and gave them the tools, knowledge, and support that they needed, that they'd really hit the ground running, um, not only on day one, but really like on day zero. Um, so every year we had about 100 students participate. Uh, they had excellent outcomes. You know, they're graduating now and we're seeing what they're doing. Um, but Quick Start, like a lot of other campus opportunities, really required that students were kind of in the know before they even got to campus. And I saw how many students were missing out on that opportunity and then the impact that that had on their first year and beyond whether they participated or didn't. And so um, that plus the idea of like the, this was a tuition based program. So there was a cost to participate and seeing kind of those things as barriers uh, inspired me sort of, I guess, to take a leap and leave UW in 2021. So I'm so close to the program, I consult with it, but I wanted to develop a model that would reduce barriers to participation and reach students earlier in the process at the point that your students are right now so that they didn't miss out um, on opportunities, uh, especially ones that were like first year early opportunities uh, in college. So that's sort of the abridged origin story of Embark. Um, again, with the broad goal of giving students the tools and strategies they need so that they could also hit the ground running um, and not miss out on opportunities. So some of our program goals are on the screen. I wanna help students um, identify and affirm their interests, their goals, their plans, we focus on really tangible, practical stuff. So 
How do you find information about a program or start kind of researching out the courses and the requirements for your program? How do you develop a resume that is effective? Um, you know, practice reaching out to professors, those sorts of things. Focus a lot on career preparation and connections that students can make. Um, and then there's lots of kind of built-in ways that they get support from people who care and who've been there, um, especially peers that are relatively close in age to them. So um, a little bit more about the program itself. Um, it's a kind of four-ish week program with like one week of onboarding. Um, it's kind of broken down into two parts. Each is about two weeks in length. Uh, each week there's online pre-work that the students can do on their own schedule. It's about one to two hours, very flexible. Um, we have some uh, WDHS staff who've signed up to help allow students to do that even during their WD time uh, during the school day, which is really nice. So um, throughout the course, there's some, some opportunities for them to check in with me online. So I can also get to know them where their needs are um, and be responsive to that throughout the course. So um, everything we do is tailorable. All the activities I've developed and refined over the years uh, based uh, directly on student feedback, including even some recent kind of tweaks that I made based on feedback of students that are registered this year about things, uh, immediate concerns that they have about uh, college in the year ahead of them. So during part one, we focus a lot on students, who they are, what they want from college. Um, also, I apologize for my dog barking in the background. We must be getting a delivery because, you know, Anytime Zoom's on, um, that's his peak time to bark. So sorry if you can hear that. Um, we focus on what students want from college. Um, and then when we come together for our kind of in-person component, part one, they work out some of those activities that they've done um, by themselves in small groups, unpack them, learn from each other. Um, we do a case study together about uh, the student college experience. And then they also hear from a panel of current undergraduates about what college has been like for them. The second half of Embark really focuses on practical skills and planning, in particular um, career development and kind of those high impact practices that really um, make college kind of, you know, the thing, a memorable high impact experience. So um, students um, research um, some out of classroom experiences that excite them. They get a crash course in professional communication um, and really develop some more firm plans um, for their first year of college, as well as sort of what um, they should be doing after that. Um, during workshop two, um, they share some of those things uh, that they've done online with small groups of their peers. Uh, we have a career panel. We practice some um, kind of career development stuff um, and then end with a reception to kind of celebrate what we've done over the last month. So um, you will see on there, uh, spring break is in the middle of Embark. We're off for that. So if you're, you know, your student is working or traveling during that, they don't have to worry about anything related to the program. So I wanna run through some kind of quick reasons that I think that this sort of development is important to students and families. Um, over years of working with thousands of students, what I've noticed is that a lot of students come to college with some idea about what they want. Um, and uh, though that may even kind of evolves over the years normally. Um, but a lot of students really struggle with what they're actually supposed to be doing in college and then how to go about doing those things. So, um, you know, that might be how to find a research position or an internship, how to plan if they want to study abroad, how requirements work, how to get involved, how to study, how to get help if you need it. Um, so Embark is focused on giving students um, kind of the skills and strategies to figure out that how and that what part, uh, as well as some exercises to help them really either figure out or affirm their why and kind of know how that can might evolve over time. When I talk with students, I also often see that they've done a lot more to get to this point than they realize. And they have a lot of valuable skills and experience. It's just a matter of helping them connect the dots. So, you know, that takes a little bit of active thinking to see how those pieces fit together and what it means for them and their goals. Um, but, you know, there's a real high payout if a student is able to do that. So, um, like I've said several times here, we focus on the practical stuff. What do we need to give students now so that they can help see what that next step is and see how they've already prepared to get there? So, um, I am a strong proponent of uh, not having fluff or busy work in what we do. 
everything is really thought out with a purpose about why we're doing it and what students can expect um, as the payoff for that uh, time and energy that they invest. Um, and my hope and what I've seen working with a lot of other students is that um, what they put in now saves them time later. You know, the other students when they get to college are just trying to figure out which way is up. And, you know, students who've done some of this work ahead of time are, you know, landing those experiences, getting those opportunities um, sooner than students who haven't uh, done the work yet. Kind of related to that is this idea that um, there's a real impact from early academic and career planning and that it creates a space for students to do more in college. So um, whether that's gaining uh, skills or knowledge earlier, um, uh, if you do that, it can translate to kind of more and better college experiences um, later on. So for some students that might be an additional major, an internship, um, studying abroad, getting research, leadership roles, you get my drift. Um, that early start can also help students graduate sooner and reduce the overall cost of education. And I think for a lot of families, gosh, especially right now with what education costs, um, that can be a real um, and literal um, value add. So um, some personal perspective. Uh, for me, when I went to school, there were a lot of things that I thought felt out of reach. Um, study abroad was one. Um, personally, I never did it. It's a big regret I have. Um, as a student, I thought it would be expensive. I thought it would cause me to fall behind. Um, I did not come from a family that really did those sorts of things. So I just, I thought it was something that was an opportunity that was for me. Um, you know, in my career as an advisor, I learned um, none of those things were true. In fact, um, the way study abroad works at most campuses is they have reciprocity agreements that makes um, courses transfer, makes the cost of attendance very comparable. Um, when I worked in uh, EW in their College of Engineering, some programs were actually cheaper to do abroad than they were to do um, first semester abroad than to do a semester at Madison due to cost of living. Um, so the reality is these experiences, whether it's study abroad or getting an internship in your major, um, holding you know leadership role, they aren't really out of reach. Um, there are resources and there are supports to help students get there. And the earlier they start exploring and planning, the easier it is to make those goals happen. Um, but it takes having that insider knowledge that like, this is for me and these are the steps to take to get there. And if I start now, I can do it um, sometimes to make those things happen. Um, finally, I think this is relatable to people who um, have experienced um, more life. I think all of us have experienced a lot of life in the last few years, especially, um, but you know, plans change, life happens um, sometimes, often in ways that are outside of our control. Um, and sometimes you just make mistakes, right, along the way. Uh, and I think for students in college, those mistakes can be differentially expensive, uh, whether it's time, money, usually both. Um, so in Embark, I spend time with students thinking about how to navigate those changes and challenges in college and in life. And again, thinking about who are the people and resources and supports that they can uh, reach out to when those happen so that they can be nimble um, in navigating them. So I want students to leave Embark uh, with resiliency, to know how to seek support and where to find it. Um, you know, inevitably there will be bumps, I think for most students. Um, but I think they can stay on course and stay on track and even potentially learn something along the way if they're equipped with the right tools. Um, the last reason is twofold. Um, the school district's paying for it. This is a great gift for your students um, to get this type of college counseling for free. Um, this is really why I developed Embark to make um, this sort of programming accessible to all students. And so, uh, but the opportunity to do it at zero cost is really pretty uh, unique. Um, as an instructor, I spend a lot of time thinking about how to create spaces, learning spaces that are inviting and inclusive to all students, whether that's online or in person, um, and that includes free food. So during the workshops, you know, I want students to feel like this is a fun space and a space they want to be in. So um, I hope that students see Embark just generally as a space that they can engage um, in learning and self-discovery. Um, if it takes a donut to foster that. I will certainly deliver those plus more. Um, and I'm very excited for the number of students we have signed up already. Um, I think that speaks to Wisconsin Dells and what they're doing as a district um, and what you're doing as 
uh, parents and families to support students. Um, so I'll do my part. I'll bring the donuts. I'll bring the good learning. I think we'll have a good time. So um, final quick rundown of logistics. Um, Embark officially starts March 27th and runs through the end of April. We have an onboarding week next week where students have to do just a small amount of kind of like work to help me get to know them a little bit better before we actually kick off class. Uh, we talked about one to two hours of work. It's flexible. They can do it during um, the school day even. Um, no class during spring break. We have two in-person workshops on April 12th and 26th. Those are during the morning on early release days. Um, and everything we do is really practical and tailorable to the student. So um, the deadline to sign up for Embark if students aren't already signed up is Friday. Um, if you have questions about whether your student is signed up, um, you can let me know if they re-register, it's not a big deal. Um, it's just a Google form, so it doesn't do anything, doesn't mess up anything on our end. Um, a little bit about family, and they can register um, at embarkseminar.com slash WDHS. Um, I'll also share my email in a minute um, as well. Um, one thing I want to briefly hit on is just family support and what you can do um, as families to support your students during this transition. It's a big one. It's a big one for them. It's a big one for you, probably. Um, and so I think there's three key things. Um, one um, is to be as open as you can to their exploration. Um, students' college plans often evolve. Um, I've worked with students, a lot of students, especially in majors, I would say relatively career-driven, business, engineering, life sciences. And for a lot of those students, they come in with a certain idea about what they wanna do. And when they get to school and start taking courses and start kind of evaluating what their interests are and where their strengths lie, those plans evolve. Um, and that's okay. I think it should be done, you know, students should do it thoughtfully, they should use their resources, uh, but a good fit goes a long way. If a student is in the right place, in a program, if it's something that excites them and they're seeking other opportunities outside of the classroom to sort of um, augment what they're learning, um, you know, there's lots of ways to do that and get involved and they'll learn about that and embark too. Um, but if they're doing those things, the end goal usually uh, shakes out pretty well. A lot of programs have kind of a really broad range of outcomes associated with them. And what I found is that the major matters far less than what students actually are doing while they're in school and the experience that they're gaining. So um, that can be hard, can especially be hard when school costs a lot of money um, and you wanna make sure that there's something good on the other end for students. But if they're engaging, it generally, I mean, almost always in my experience works out for students pretty well. Kind of along with that, I think encouraging your students to utilize the resources that are available to them there are so many folks across all different college campuses that are there to support students and often um, really underutilized. Um, I think because a lot of times students either figure other people have it figured out or they don't need to do that um, or they're just unsure where to go or what to do. So, you know, if your student, if you're figuring out that they're either having some difficulties or even if they're not, especially if they're not, utilizing advising, utilizing career services, getting to know their instructors. Those are things that are huge value adds to the investment um, that they're already making in their education. Finally, specifically with Embark, um, you're welcome and encouraged to stay connected with it. So if you want a copy of the syllabus, um, if you have questions, if you just want to know what's going on each week, shoot me a message. I'm very happy to keep uh, students and families in the loop as far as the topics that we're discussing or things that you could be discussing with your student. Uh, or just generally answering questions that you have, um, whether it's during the class or after the class, I'm very happy to be um, a resource. So um, with that, um, if there are any questions, um, feel free to either turn on your mic and camera and ask, you can throw them in the chat. Um, you can shoot me an email, um, the website embarkseminar.com slash WDHS will take you to the Google form for your student to register. Um, it also has my contact information on it, so you're welcome um, to reach out to me um, as well. I guess one final plug I would put in, if your student has registered, um, they have gotten, there's kind of a two-step process. So the registration is just a Google form. Once they register, I enroll them in the actual course. We use uh, Canvas, which is an online um, course system that most colleges use. It's kind of a preeminent college uh, course website. Um, when I register students, 
they get an email trigger that says you've been invited to this course, you need to click this link to participate. Um, we need to get them to click that link so that it, it kind of finalizes their registration and they can actually access the course. So they'll keep getting pings from the system saying you haven't yet accepted your invitation, click here. So we'll get bugged a lot, but um, if you can bug them too to help remind them to click that link, they don't have to do anything else at this point, um, but that will finalize their um, enrollment in the program. So. With that, thanks for taking the time on um, you know, a busy weeknight uh, to learn more. Um, if you have questions, feel free um, to ask away or to get in touch with me um, individually. Okay, I'm don't, not seeing anybody come through with questions. Um, oh yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, too, I really appreciate it. Um, I will make sure that this um, this is recorded. So um, if you do have questions or wanna see anything um, related to this, uh, feel free to reach out to me um, or Allison and we can get you a copy of that too. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you Allison for hosting on uh, the school end and uh, excited to get to know um, all of your students very soon. So have a great night.